incredible. We have uh, some of the top creators in the game right now. Um, again, I want to shout out Ethan Stevens, Dro, Irko. Um, these guys have taken over the charts over the past year and a half. Um, and we want to talk a little bit about that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if we don't mind, can we get into just a quick just background of Ethan? Let's start there with, you know, how would you get started? Where are you from? Um, you know, what is the last project you worked on? Um, so I'm from uh, Covina, California. Um, in high school, like I started recording with my friends because he wanted to rap and I wanted to produce. So one of us had to do it. Right. And so, um, yeah. So then after that, and then I figured when I graduated, I wanted to become an architect. Too many years of school. So um, I found out about engineering. You could do a shit like as actual career. So I started to go to the Los Angeles Recording School, and then like first month I got an internship at Paramount. Right. And then Paramount, I mean people like you, right. like Mustard, Metro. Right. Yeah. I used to run amok at Paramount. I'm running now. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> they, they hated me at Paramount. I'm talking, I would three, four days straight. It'll be a straight party. I would book a room. Well, we'll talk about that later. Um, so yeah, so what is the last project that, uh, that, that you worked on? Uh, future. I never liked you. I never liked you. Congratulations on that. Appreciate you went crazy. It. Clap it up for Ethan on that future album. We're gonna get more into just the process, but you know, I want to get into Dro. Um, you know, obviously, man, talented dude, bro. You personally, you know, under the radar. I, I you know, it, it took some research of me to really understand and you know realize where you from. I, I want you to really explain to these people where you come from, like how, like what's your process, or you know, how'd you get here today? Um, originally, I'm from Miami, Florida. And uh, I pretty much started out there. I was working with Rico Love for a little bit. Shout out Rico. Yeah, Rico. He's definitely the man. And uh, from there, I just decided to make the move out here to L.A. Um, at kind of one of these events. It was a smaller event, but I met Dave Pensado, where he was the one who kind of mentored me into the mixing game. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you, did you work with him? Like you yep, yep, him? yep. Right. For about almost almost two years. It was like a year and year and a half, a little bit more than he, that. Yeah, Dave, he, he breathes legends. I mean, he, he, oh, yeah. Jason Joshua was one of his assistants as well, right? Yeah, yeah. yep, yep. And, uh, you know, WizKid thing happened coincidentally. I just bumped into him at a studio. Right. And uh, I started listening to his music, and I told him, I said, hey, man, I think I can help. Right. You know, and then one thing led to the next, and I started mixing his music. And Killed here we are today. today. <laughs> Killed it today. I want to talk a little bit more into the process in a second, but let's get into uh, Erico. Um, man, shout out to you, brother. I know, again, man, you've been killing it, you know, beyond this Kanye you. album. You know, this is just one that obviously you completely just killed. Thank you. And I want to talk about where you one of the guys that almost got fired as well when Kanye <laughs> was tripping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, like, let's talk about a little bit like where you come from. Like, how did you, like, you know, like, where are you from? How did yeah, you get started? For sure. I was born and raised in Venice, Italy. So, uh, you know, the landscape of the early 90s, uh, musically speaking, in my country was completely different than anything here, you know? In fact, I fell in love with hip-hop music because of, you know, that at that time, hip-hop music, especially, specifically boom-bap hip-hop from New York, it was the music with the biggest bass. I've always been a bass guy, and so that was it for me, you know? And that's how I learned English, actually, listening to rap music, yeah, yeah. So at first, you know, it sounded like blah, 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 blah. I didn't know what they were saying, you know? I didn't know anything, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I just kind of fell in love with that whole thing and uh, eventually discovered the whole culture and this beautiful, the beautiful culture that surrounds it, you know? Right. And, uh, but yeah, so for me, it was always audio first. And it just incidentally happened that music was attached to it. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah, then I, you know, I'm kind of known still in my hometown for having the biggest bass in the trunk in these <laughs> tiny little cars. If you guys have ever traveled to Europe, you know, our cars are very oh, big. I, know. Exactly. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I have the, you know, the biggest subs and now I have the biggest subs in a building, you there know, it is. There it is. <laughs> like you. We got to we got to we got to bring back one of the Fiat's and get it like a sub. I want you to do the, the car test that you right. do on YouTube. That's in right. The Fiat. That's you, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, that's incredible. That's incredible. Real quick. Um, I just wanted to talk. I mean, I know a lot of, like, spe specifically, like, West Coast music and, like, East Coast music is big overseas, you know, especially back in the day. Like, who was it, like, who was who really influenced you? Like, what was the artist or who were the artists that you listened to during those times back in Italy? Right, right, right. My biggest influence was definitely Timbaland. You right. <laughs> yeah. That was, the, and, you know, when I got to work with that team, it was like, wait a minute, is this real life right now? It's mind-blowing. Right. And the other one would be definitely Dre. So, right. uh, you know. <laughs> wow, you worked with 
from one spectrum to the other. Yeah. I mean, yeah. on two, greatness, two girls, yeah. of greatness. I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. Of course, the disappointment was always the max when I was trying to compare my mixes to anything that was Dre it's, it's shit. Humbling, right? Yeah, it was like, oh yeah, no, 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 we're not, <laughs> we're not even close, you know. But that was the perfect way for me to like be in the gym and just, you know, grow the muscles because whatever I was working on was so far away from the quality that anything that was coming from America was. So then when I got to New York and I started working with the real guys, I was like, oh, wait a minute. This is very different, you know? So, yeah. I mean, you said something important there. It's like in the gym. Yeah. You know, that, they know, somebody obviously from a different country, right? You said you couldn't even speak the language, you right. know? And, you know, the fact that you've taken the time to go into the gym and strengthen your muscles when it comes to the totally. sonics, right? Totally. It's important, you know? And it, it keeps showing you panel after panel after panel how important it is to remain a student of the game. You know, understand the tools that you're using. Study them. Study the people you look up to, right? Understand what they use as tools. Understand their process. And try to apply. Make as much as that applicable to your process as possible. And again, yeah. you know, these are testaments to that. Incredible. When they say there's beauty in the struggle, right? When you're working with the trashiest of singers because it's their, your cousin or something, don't tell them that, of course. But that's the perfect moment for you to really you know, get great, great at your craft. And then when you get to work with a great artist, it's like, oh, this is a breeze, you know? Muscle memory. Yeah. yeah. That's a fact, man. Shout out to you. Um, man, that's incredible, man. A lot of, a lot of great stories. Um, so obviously, you know, uh, Ethan, you know, working with Future, was that the first album that you've worked with him or that you mixed for him or worked with him on? Yeah, that's the first project. How did you link up with Future? Metro. Metro? So you worked with Metro before the Future Project? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I work with Metro full time. Okay, where? So I'm with him every day. Incredible, incredible. What's that so, like? Like, tell me, tell me what that process is like um, with Metro. He's a talented dude. I'm Shout out to Metro, one of the homies. Um, but super meticulous, right? Somebody who knows exactly what he wants. Yeah. Right? As an engineer, when working with a producer that knows exactly what they want, explain what that is like. Uh, knowing when to not change that. Right. Like when to like not over process shit and when right. not to like that's how he wanted it. Right. You know, it's not about me. It's about right. him. It's, it's exactly. His we're, music. we're tools. We're tools. Yeah. In yeah, the yeah. Room. So it's just is like it, no, I want to start. Is it more of him giving you the direction, or are you just kind of having that intuition on what not um, to do or do? We're on the same page for the most part. We've nice. been working together for long enough now that it's yeah. I like I, I might tell him something like, "Man, I need to turn the reverb down or up," right. and he'd be like, "Yes," <laughs> saying the same thing. <laughs> So we're on the same page. I think, I think that's something that goes like unnoticed is like, as an engineer, it's okay to like not do something, like not do it all at all times, right? Yeah. It's, sometimes it's okay to not touch it, right? And that's when you're working with a producer or an artist that knows exactly what they want. It makes our lives so much easier because you don't have to go through the rigmarole of trying effects and trying different things, you know, to try to, you know, that spends hours. It takes hours to mix something, take it off, try something else, take it off. You know, so I, you know, shout out to Metro for you know working with him. Uh, Dro, you know, when you, for one, shout out to you because when I first hit, when I first heard the Whiskers album, you know, I was actually looking at engineers that might have been from Nigeria or in Africa that mixed it because the way you mix the percussion, like the way it sounds, so authentic, right? Like, did you study this genre for a little bit while you were working on it, or like, what was your approach as you were working on Afro beats? Like, you know, that's. Yeah, I think I had a little advantage just because I'm Brazilian right. and I a lot of our culture. Say, where yeah. are you from? Because that's where it really begins. But yeah. No, for sure it does. Yeah. You know, our culture is based off African culture. Of so, course. Yeah, our music is kind of like their music. It makes percussion sense. Heavy. It's heavy. Very not, percussion not heavy. Sure. Not really drum influenced. Exactly. Right. So, like, I kind of, you know, already had it in my blood, but I definitely had to study a lot of it, you know? And thankfully, because Wiz introduced me to a lot of great guys, a lot of the greatest producers out there, and they would come out here to L.A., and, you know, I would kind of sit with them for a long time and have conversations about it. They would play me songs that they grew up on and, you know, things like that. So I was able to kind of soak up the sauce a little bit. And, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely took a lot of, you know, studying. How do you think, how, how do you think the time that, you, that it took for you to study the yeah. sounds and the sonics and the placements of, again, percussion? Because I'm a big fan of, of Afrobeats. I'm a piano. I, I, yeah, yeah, for I sure. go to Africa at least once a year and turn the fuck up. I love <laughs> it out there, right? <laughs> Best place it's for that. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, I it's crazy. It's, it's a blast. It's, I need to go. It's a blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, you know, what is, like, the time that you've taken studied, like, how would you say it, like, really helps you execute on this gem of a project you work on? Yeah, I mean, I, I, honestly, man, like, I had the greatest people around me as well. You know what I mean? And uh, specifically the, the main producer, P2J, he was, like, pretty much executive producing a project. He basically said, dude, do you, you know, send it back and we'll work on it. Fire. And 
the freedom that it gave me was actually amazing because a lot of times, you know, one of the hardest lessons as an engineer is when not to do something. You know right, what I mean? Right, like right. You guys were just talking about, like, it makes it easier for us, right. but a lot of the times we want to jump in there and do everything. Right. You right. know, so he was honestly a, a, a real big real big part of it you know we kind of going back and forth on trying different things because made in legos 2 is not really like a super afro beat album very crossover you know very crossover. yeah that, that's why i got critically claimed in the states exactly right, exactly right, i right. mean the low end and that type of music didn't really exist before right and then you talk about you know especially even essence one of the songs that did extremely well here has a ton of low end in it right which is kind of finding a new balance for that finding a new sound you know and it took a lot of experimentation right you know and i think you cracked it bro I think Thank you, you cracked it. Not Appreciate even that, it. but you said something. The producer, right? Just being open to trying things and being with you throughout that process, which is an important fucking step, right? Yeah, he Because at that point, like you said, you're not worried about failure, right? Yep. Because you could do no wrong because you have somebody yeah. there to catch you when you fall. Right. Yeah. Sonically, at least, right? 100%. Yeah. No, if I can just them. say something, I mean, this side, that, that dynamic relationship that you have as engineer producer is so important because I came up that way as well. You know, um, well, when I, my current uh, partner now, Danger, like, that's how we started. Everything was communication. Like, he was a young producer. I was a young engineer. But just that dialogue really helped me, you know, cultivate to be a better engineer and really understand, you know what I mean? Like, sort of what was happening, things that I wasn't necessarily understanding because I don't have a, I'm not a musician. Right. You know what I mean? So that helped me kind of become like, okay, I get this. You know what I mean? I kind of felt more of a musician after having that dialogue with him over time. So, that's, super that's, important. It's very important. Like I said, this, there's this there's this trifecta for creation of music, right? It's just literally a triangle. You have the artist, the producer, and the engineer, right? And without one of the each one, you don't have anything. Nope. You know, so it's crazy too. I'm starting to cut you off because, you know, for a long time in my when I was like younger growing up, I never even knew there was an engineer position. In my mind, it was just artist producer in the room. You know, and it wasn't until, like, I would always say I want to do music, I want to be in music, and the engineer position wasn't even, like, even explained or Me told too. or nothing. I had no idea. Right. <laughs> so one day I show up to Full Sail, the school that I went to, and I walk into a studio and I'm like, whoa, I want to do that. What's this? And they're like, well, we can teach you how to be an engineer. I'm like, what's an engineer? You know what I mean? But that's how, like, it, you know, jobs like this were not ever it was like I, I don't want to say it was secret society i just don't think it was anything that people could really talk about right. but i was so intrigued and that the, that that trifecta that ali is talking about is exactly what it is i wanted to be in the room and be creative with the producer with the artist with the writers and you know and 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 here we are like you know that's a fact that's a fact man erico man the man of the hour uh <laughs> the bow ties <laughs> okay Yo, the bow ties you, i will the take bow that ties, yes, the, the man yes. The man of the bow ties. You know, <laughs> how many? Let me just ask: How many do you own? How many bow ties do you have? Three hundred. You you really, really? count that? Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Shout Every out day. You. Every day is a new one. Yeah. Wow. Well, the there's part. up to three hundred and sixty-five yeah. days in a year, yeah. so you, yeah. you, you got. I'm, I'm still collecting. <laughs> Wait, yo, maybe we'll gift you one. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. I need an engineer's one. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah, I'm on it, guys. Engineers both sides. ASAP, 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 ASAP. Um, you know, for one, congratulations on your new facility. Thanks. You know, um, I've seen on socials and obviously I've been watching the YouTube, yeah. which are incredible. If you haven't seen Erico's YouTube, you want to just say it real quick? I know you're yeah, not thanks. a YouTuber, but... Oh, it's just Erico. It's just Erico. my name. It'll pop up. Um, yeah. But yeah, talk about like, like what was the process like building that room? Like what type of speakers do you have? What type yeah. of headaches did you deal with? I could tell you mine with my Man, studio. Mine too. It's the yeah. same. <laughs> it's the same. We all in the same boat. Like yeah. anyone that's trying to build something. And like I did from scratch, it's even more so right. of, a, of a thing, you know? Uh, well, it's been you know years. Uh, the the first uh, the first section was getting the team together. So the acoustician was number one, and then the architect and the engineers, all of that. But the acoustician was really the 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 most difficult one for me because of course I'm erecting a building. Fine, I don't give a shit about the building. I want the studio. I want to talk about the studio, you know. So it was all all about that. But uh, that took me a long time. I you know freelance in America for over 15 years, all, all, all over 10 years. It, you know, I kind of had a little bit of a list of, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I remember I like liking that studio and maybe not really liking the acoustics of that one. So who designed this one? You know, right. so I had a list. Kind of pulling in everything that you yeah. like from every studio. But then a lot of these uh, studio designers are very old guys that I don't want to talk shit, but, you know, they don't do emails. Like, they don't do oh text. Gosh, really? It's like, I need to, you know? Yeah, of course. <laughs> it's my baby. Yeah. You know? right. 
So, I, I, you know, so it was that. Anyway, I finally walk into this room and I'm like, oh my God, this is incredible. That's like kind of like the design I'm going for because I didn't want to have something that looked incredible but didn't sound quite good. And I also didn't want it to sound crazy perfect but being just like a dry looking place, you know? I mean, it's the vibe of the studio is, right. a, is everything. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to have both of them and I finally saw this in the studio that I walked into and I was like, you know, put me in contact with whoever designed this place and the next day I was on the phone with this guy who happens to be Italian. So of course, you know, it was a connection a right match there. match made in heaven, huh? <laughs> yeah. So then after that, you know, while the building was being erected, we had the studio being designed in Italy and once that was done and I was uh, happy with the design, I asked the studio designer, I was like, what do you think about the actual construction? And he was like, well, why don't you consider these guys in Italy? And I was like, wait, but the studio's in LA. How to, you know? He's like, well, why, do, why don't we make it in Rome and then pack it onto a ship and send it over to the other side of the planet? And I was like, okay. Sounds expensive. Sounds expensive. <laughs> Sounds complicated. Sounds like I shouldn't do it, so I did it. <laughs> hey, always, always doing the opposite, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's, so that was another thing. You know, I imported a bunch of material from across the world, literally. So that was a, a, a while. And you know when you're, like, ordering some shoes and you keep an eye on, on, on the tracking number to see where the oh, shit's right, are? Oh, right, man, what right, a right, nightmare. Right, right. Imagine <laughs> if you have three trucks worth of recording studio. <laughs> Going across the ocean. Uh, yeah, like on the boat. On the boat. And through a country, by the way. I would have flew out and hopped on the boat. <laughs> I was like, I gotta, I gotta, let me drive the boat. I would have yeah. been on that boat. That ain't a boat. That's a freight. <laughs> yeah, a freight. Yeah, what right. do they call those things? My big ass back there just trying to steer that big motherfucker. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it was a trip, but then you know the the, the thing finally showed up in uh, Long Beach. I actually went to see it, like in the in the trailers. I was like, oh, that is the studio, and uh, yeah, and eventually we installed the whole thing, and everything was great. Now, one of the other problems that was uh, a big thing to do for me was that I wanted to have a concrete building because I wanted the sound not to be able to leave out the room, right? So what I did is I did everything concrete, including the ceilings and even the floating room inside of it also concrete so shit moves like you feel it when you jump around when you blast the oxburgers and everything but the sound does not leave that room yeah and another thing that's last thing i don't want to bore you guys too much but no you're not boring i'm intrigued all right so uh, one of the things is i chose my subs first and i decided that the height of the sub was going to be the amount at which the studio is going to be built inside of the ground so basically behind the subs, there's the concrete that we were talking about, but also beyond the concrete, there's earth. Mm. So the base, you know, this low end information is naturally omnidirectional. It tries to go right, everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah. Like a sphere. But in my studio, it literally cannot. It, pushes that. it can only go towards so the So you're getting like a beam of base being shot your it, way. It goes your way. And, yeah. and so that's how I got, not only that, of course, there's a lot of other things, the acoustics of the room, the, 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 bay, the, the subs itself and everything. But you can make out the difference between 37 and 39 hertz. Right. There's a difference. You can feel the difference, I'm sure. You feel the difference, yeah. but you can also hear it. Right. So, you know, all, doing all that uh, pristine work that we all do in the low end of urban music, you know, that you got to know exactly the difference between 50 and 45 hertz, right? right? So I'm super, super excited about that. And my chief house engineer, Steph, when he first started working on the big speakers, he was like, oh, I think I can mix on headphones. And once, once he started mixing on the big ones, he's like, oh, yeah, I'm not going back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And even for me, you know, I've gotten so much faster on mixing now. Right. And because I, I you're, you're hearing, it's translating. There is no secrets. Right, right. What you hear is exactly what you're it hearing. translates you know? perfectly. And that's so, a blessing, having a studio that translates. Because we talked about oh, earlier, yeah. moving yeah. around to different studios, having to relearn the sound, <laughs> having to relearn the sound of the speakers, the yeah. acoustics of the room. Yeah. It's like you're actually spending more time Relearning the room in the in the in, the in the in the sonics than you actually are creating the song. Very true. Yeah, man. So shout out to you, man. I, I can't yeah. imagine what that was like. Uh, I'm in the middle of the process of building my studio now. It's a complete fucking headache. Uh, my <laughs> hate contractors. They can all die slow. I hate it. Um, but no, it's, it's to say the least. It's it's more of it's it's more of like an accomplishment feeling, right? It's you know we spent so much years giving other people all of this money. Right, you know, in places where they kick us out when you're five minutes over your time, yeah. you know, it's there's, there's, it's not about the art to them; it's about the money. Right, and it's having your own space. It's, it's liberating, you know. Totally, it's incredible, totally. incredible, incredible. Um, so I mean, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna double back the down line, but I want to talk, Erico, since we're on you right now. Um, uh, you know, uh, besides the Kanye, what is some of the other stuff that you worked on, and then we'll get into how you got with Kanye on this last album. Yeah. Um, and what that process was like. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I've, uh, I'm working on all kinds of stuff all the time. I'm kind of known for my albums. Like, I, I take very uh, good care of song flow. I mix and master my own stuff. So there's an advantage of, uh, you know, having like the bird's eye view of the whole album. And so I do a lot of albums. I'm doing alternative stuff, a lot of hip hop stuff. Uh, I'm doing a video game too. Um, about, you know, uh, Street Fighter 6. I mixed the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Congrats. if you, get, you guys get to play it, I mixed every single piece of music in the whole thing. Like gotta, 60 plus songs. They like. gotta throw a bow tie on one of the characters. Yeah. That yeah, has yeah. to be like a, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. has to be Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of stuff, man, and uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, a blessing, you know, uh, 20 plus years, you know, I opened my first studio in 98, so being here, you know, 25 years later or whatever, it's like... You're doing something right. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying, <laughs> and uh, yeah, about the Kanye stuff, yeah, I, I, you know, I got introduced to him uh, through 88 Keys in 2009, I want to say, or whenever I did 88 Keys album, and he was, ex Kanye was exactly producing the album. And, uh, you know, I've been mixing stuff for him here and there the whole time, you know, but 10 years later, I finally get to right, get mix, uh, you know, the whole album, yeah. you know, and that was great. Um, 32 songs. I started mixing it at a stadium. You can only imagine, speaking of acoustics, <laughs> how it is to mix in a stadium. Of course, I was rocking headphones, right, right, you know, right. only headphones. And then after that, we spent another couple of days in a studio still in Atlanta. And then I finally fly uh, back to L.A. where I finished the whole thing wow. in my spot. Of finally, course. I was like, oh, wait a minute. It's like a breath of fresh air. Oh, yeah. Like, We're yeah. not putting it out like this. Right. So I fixed a lot of stuff. And um, yeah, man, 32 songs. That was like a month of work, maybe a little bit more than that. Wow. And, uh, you know, and well over two billion streams later, you know, it's like, well... Right. I, I, I still can't believe that happened, you know, and, right, uh, right. and it's such a great project. You know, Jason was involved. In, he's somewhere here. He was involved in the whole thing. And, right. yeah, you know, my guy, Steph, was involved. In, right. You know, it was, it was out, a labor of work. Shout out to Squad. Yeah, shout out to Squad. Sure. I know it's a good feeling when you work on an album at that statute. And, like, now the world gets to hear your work. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of it affirms. And same with Dro, and I can imagine yeah, staying with Ethan. You know, it's, you know, when the world gets to hear your work, it's like, like, fuck, I told you. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's more liberating because it's it's, it's like... It's, 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 it's just a, a feeling of accomplishment, you know, because for, so, for one, 88 Keys, I've been a fan for so long. Shout out to, I haven't heard 88 Keys in a while. I haven't heard the name. Um, but yeah, man, that's, that's incredible, man. Uh, Dro, like working with, like what, like what was the process? I want to double back because you said something about mixing the headphones and mastering. We'll come back to that question. Um, but when you working in general, what is like your, what's your workflow? I would love to sit here and tell you I have one. But I kind of just go with whatever I feel really? at the current moment. I'm not a pull it up and do the same thing over and over kind of guy. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I'll pull up a song and whatever I feel at that moment is what I'll do. You know, are, so are you all the way in the box? 100% in the box. 100%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I experimented outside of it a little bit, but just the convenience of yeah. being in the box. And Multiple revisions. and Yeah. And also, I feel like once you've played around enough out of the box, you know how to make the box sound like what it needs to sound like, you know? Yeah, ain't that right? Yeah. But you started it, in the box. I started in the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it was, it's it, different it, it, yeah. if you start, yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> and I only say that, guys, because, like, I know we started on analog. I mean, I started, yeah. I mean, even two-inch tape. Like, yep. I was back on tape, and then I had to kind of, you know, transition into all that, and that's, it's hard. It's a big like, transition. It's a huge transition. Yeah. Like, yeah. I didn't want to give up. Yeah, like, yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, I, I opened my studio in 2014, and I have a SSL 9000J in my studio, and it was maybe, like, four like four years after I opened, where my partner was like, you starting to become a bit of a dinosaur. I'm like, damn, how, <laughs> how dare you, you know? Yeah, but, yeah. like, I love working on a console, you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. workflow-wise, it made more sense, and I had to transition into that. And it was not, like, one thing versus another. It was, like okay, you know, I'm hybrid. I'm going to just do a hybrid. You know, at least I still yeah. have the console. So eventually it was just full blown. Now I'm completely in the box. Yeah. I still tend to go out I feel out like here technology also caught up as well, though. I, yeah, that yeah, too. But I mean, I still, I still use hardware. Yeah. You know what I mean? From time to time, I do like, you know, hard inserts and whatnot. But yeah. I think that transition, it was hard for me to give up. Yeah, I'm not against it. If you got to no, use you it, can't, you know no, what listen, I mean. Like, not at all. All, that's that's yeah. not my process too. It's like yeah. Yeah. I spent so many years before even working in analog, just going to these big rooms and seeing all. Like I used to get mad at just seeing people disrespecting the board. Like just they're just oh. ashtrays and shit on them. Like yo, yeah, like it's crazy. Like damn, they're only using it to turn the shit up and down. I'm like fuck. Like we have access to it. Right. That's not, you know what I'm saying? But 
it is like a like a level. So like, there's certain artists that I work with that, for one, just they want that more like crunchier sound rather than getting that depth and clarity. So personally, like when I choose between analog or digital or hybrid, it depends on the artist I'm working with, right? Yeah, hundred percent. You know, but you know, me personally, like I, I started in the box, you know, on on a bunch of cracked and stolen plugins, um, and then you know, working with Dre, you know, obviously he's an analog king, you know, uh, he taught me his techniques on the SSL and. I kind of fused all the things that I've learned from, you know, teaching myself in the box and everything Dre taught me, and that's what created my sound. But I do hear you, you know, if you, every, you're only as good as your last mix, right? And, you know, when you approach something thinking, oh, oh, I'm going to run these drums through my presets of drums, like, you're, you're, for one, you're not having fun. It's not, you know, it's, you're streamlining something that shouldn't be too much streamlined. Have fun with it, you know? Every mix should be a new experience, right? You should, every mix should be another time for you to try something new, um, have fun with, and experiment. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. Um, Steven, or Ethan, I'm sorry. Ethan Stevens. Um, so uh, yourself, what, are you completing the box as well? Um, it kind of depends on the project. Right. Like Futures was in the box. Didn't right. have a choice. Right. Um, they Savage Mode 2 was yeah. on the console. 100%. They work so fast. You know, I did the Future and Thug mixtape, like, the one couple years back. And, like, fucking hell, they wanted... They, and this is after Seth passed away. We know, rest in peace to Seth. Um, but the, the rate they were expecting me to turn these songs around, yeah. it's like, yo, they sent me... I had to do Dolby Atmos and the 360 RA you, you, all in the same time. But the Dolby has to be turned in now before the stereos. How is that Because it takes more time, I guess. But, oh. it's, yeah, it's but by damn near what, impossible. standards is that... That's, it, that's crazy. Because uh, yeah. you have to have the masters back before you could even do that. Wow. So, I mean, that's, I mean. To you, like line it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The it, stems at least. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's crazy. I mean, so, so your process with working with Future in this, in this last specific album in general, um, working in the box, right? Or did you do a hybrid? No, it was on the box. Oh, the box. How long, did it take, how long did it take you to mix all those records? Man, I don't know. I mean, I was probably with them for maybe a month, if that, but like. We were recording at the same time, so wow. he might stop me mid mix and like I want to record a new song. Oh man, wow. that's so that's then it's going back and forth, that, and then I hate no, we just looked at each other. Yeah, we like, oh god. Yeah. <laughs> then that with just the throws traveling. you all out the loop, like like all that like I cannot, like I literally stopped recording or at least being known. Stop! Don't ask me to record. Not in the mix. Like, I, I got to have yeah. one of my other guys do it. I get it frustrated. Yeah. I'll spend three days on a mix, right, for the artist to be like, yo, I, I got a new I, verse. Yes. It's like, God damn, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck. Like, you could have called me three days later. I could have been out in the back smoking. <laughs> damn, fucking up the vibe. Oh <laughs> no, nah, that's funny, man. Um, no, nah, that's crazy, man. Um, again, but all three of you guys had an incredible year, year and a half. Erko, you talked about you mix and master. Yesterday, we had a panel where... You know, we had some guests speaking about, you know, them liking the ability to do the mix and back away, throw their hands up and let somebody else add their creative two cents. Is there some sort of advantage or disadvantage for mixing and mastering or only mixing or only mastering, in your opinion? I prefer personally to do both because I know that what's coming out of my speakers, it's what's going to come out of the speakers of the fans. So I have full control from the mixing all the way to the master. But really my mastering is just literally a, D, a 7 dB increase on a limiter at the end of the print. That's it. So your mix is already dynamic. You don't have to do too much to... That's it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my thinking is, I always say this, if it needs to be fixed at mastering, that means that the mix is, is lacking. So it's so much like if we need more high end on the mix, right? At mastering level, when you have the hi hats there, you just turn up the freaking hi hats, right, right. you know, you're done. So that's how. I, but this is new to me though. Like for like more than 15 years, I've 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 done that. I was mixing, send it off to mastering house, and that's, and do that. Right. But then as I started, like I'm like, you know what? They're taking I'm, away from your mix. Yeah, yeah. Losing the dynamics. Where's just, my bass? Yeah. You know, I yeah. I did a record with this guy we're not gonna name, and the thing came out, it was amazing, my mix was amazing. I hear the video when it came out like a couple of weeks later, and I'm like, wait, wait where's my bass here? 
Like they sent it to some pop guy that killed my low end. Oh my God. Just it and I'm like, yo, like you could have at least called me and say, hey, Send this is what reference. I'm doing. Yeah. But you know, uh, yeah. so and you, you you better believe the guy never called me back for a mix. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that he it's suspected that it's <laughs> the white guy with the bow tie, right? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that was you see yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. it's one of those things, you know. So it's basically giving more control over the final product. Correct. To correct. Yeah, yeah. A client. Because I do hear you, because I've, I've, obviously we had Depp um, yesterday, who's the master engineer how I work with, legend of a guy. Uh, but we have that relationship to where if he sends me a master, he sends it to me before he sends it to the label. So I'm able to kind of listen to it, uh, be like, you know what, you took too much low end out, You've, you know, it's too bright, or whatever the case might be. So that relationship well, it should up. be that way though it should, it be, should that be that way yeah. because at the end of the day i mean not to knock off these executives but the, you know unless they're coming from a production background they're not really like they're right. not what are they listening for they just they're not listening some, to it the way yeah. that us you know we would all listen to something and it's not there they're not getting critiqued off that creative right, right. They're, they're getting paid no matter what if the album is released right right exactly. where our next gig is going to be based off based of how off this on, project sounds exactly and really it's how long resume. does a mastering engineer spend with the record you know say it again and really how long does a mastering engineer spend with a record right you right. live with it you, you know to. like you have to be able right. to approve the last master right in my opinion i mean i only use one guy yeah. kind of the same you know relationship with right. him but i've had situations uh dave in the uk his whole last album i pretty much mastered it as i was mixing it as well take off my stuff send it to my guy he ended up putting out the versions that i mastered because he liked them better you know i, I never I, i'm never mad at a good shootout yeah, you know never. What I'm saying I love never. a good shit out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, shout out to you, man. But you have to listen to it, man. Like, like you said, that right there is detrimental, especially when it comes to low end. If master engineer cuts out your low end, man. We oh, got, it happens all we the got time. beef. It happens all the time. <laughs> and I don't understand why. Yeah, fact. like I always have to send that note in. Like, keep the ass on. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, yeah. don't I mean, take the ass off this shit. I like, need, I need the ass fat, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just put your name on it, man. Send it back. <laughs> <laughs> we can say you mastered it. It's all good. <laughs> it's all good. I don't want the credit. Just, it's cool, man. Just don't fuck it up. <laughs> just don't fuck it up. That's jokes. That's jokes. Real quick, like before we have any more questions, does the crowd have any questions? We have a ton. Oh, Let's get my questions. questions. Yeah. I like how you guys talked about um, like building your own studio, and right. we always hear artists talk about what they need in the studio. What do you guys need in the studio? Like for me, I have two candles setting on top for the vibe of it. What is your guys' uh, essentials for the studio to get into that zone and that creative space? <laughs> Hella dope. You know what I'm saying? I need the gas, my boy. What are you talking about? Nah, uh, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, pr pr he's not, you can tell he's not an engineer. He, he puts the mic right in front of the speaker. Clap it up for Prince one time, please, for not being an engineer. Know your strengths. Um, um, but, <laughs> um, but nah, uh, my pro I mean, I, I just like to come in. I mean, I would come in, I would like to chill. I, I love company, right? I like people around me. I like to have conversation. I like to talk shit. That kind of gets me like, okay, I'm about to get to work, right? Um, but. Also, I like to be in a calm environment. It's kind of like counterproductive. Like I say, I like people around, but I like to be calm. Um, I just like to be in a good mood. You know what I'm saying? It's because, like I said, as I'm sitting there and mixing, and if I gotta, if I gotta loop a snare and a drum for the next six hours, I don't want to think about some bullshit. I don't want to have the stress about about 30 people calling me all day. We got Luke or CTO somewhere around here who calls me and irritates the fuck out of me. Um, so I cut my phone off. You know what I'm saying? That's one. Of, that's that's how I get started. Is make sure that. If you're not in the room with me, then you don't have access to me because my phone will just completely go off, you know? What about you guys? Well, for me, it will be acoustics for sure. You know, I need to be able, like we were saying earlier, to have an understanding of what's the audio. But other than that, I'm, I'm low-key, you know, my little tea in the morning. I'm, I'm good, you know? I'm good, yeah. <laughs> you need the bow tie. Yeah, the bow tie for sure, of course. Yeah, I think it's all, you know, whatever fits your vibe. Right. You know, I mean, acoustics for me is a huge thing. I struggle if I'm not in my own room. You know, if I move around a lot, you know, we were talking about this earlier. He said he probably hasn't done a single album in the same room uh, twice. So for me, that's hard. I'll move around and I'll go to different, you know, studios and I'll listen to the speakers and I'm like, ah, I don't really know what's going on here. As soon as I get back in my room, I know immediately what I need to do. So acoustics definitely a big thing, but also whatever just makes you vibe, you know, whatever gets you in your zone. You gotta be able to enjoy it. Same thing, yeah. Nothing specific, really. <laughs> It's just like, I'll just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's got their own vibe, you know. But, you know, again, it's just, it's, it's just cater to yourself, you know what I'm saying? Whatever makes you most comfortable, you know. Anybody else? Uh, I think we got one in the back. 
Uh, I have two questions. Uh, Ali, I know you uh, worked with Kendrick for 10 plus years and you guys with Future and Kanye. Uh, what would you guys say that their mixing process or recording process is like? Say it one more time. Uh, what would you guys say that their mixing process or recording process is like? For? For um, uh, Kendrick, for you, um, for, and for Future and Kanye for them. So Kendrick's recording process. So obviously I've been done everything for Kendrick over the past 10 years. The only album that I wasn't fully involved in was his last one. Because obviously I'm trying to build this shit. So there was a point in my career where I had to be like, yo, okay, am I going to continue to, you know, be available for an artist 24-7? Or am I going to build something for myself, right? So I kind of, you guys obviously can see what I chose. Um, but everything before that, um, the process with Kendrick is, he's a legend. He's a GOAT. Like, he knows exactly what he wants, right? The recording process, um, which I haven't recorded for him since 2006, but it's, it's, it's more of watching him pace back and forth, putting together all these things in his head, right? keep having to loop certain parts of the session for him so he can write to them. Um, and then when he's done, record him, right? But the mixing sessions, he's super hands-on, right? He sits with you, sits with mastering. He, he wants to ask you questions on, on terminologies. You know, what does this do? Why would you use this other than that, right? But that shows you the type of artist he is, somebody who's so intrigued into the process. So when he's making a song for himself, He's like, okay, I'm going to try to stack it this many times because I know this effect would do this if you do that, right? And that's what I was saying to the young lady here who was an, who was an artist who was asking about, you know, is it, to learning how to record or mix your own music. It's important because all it's going to do is, at the end of the day, give you clarity on what sound you're trying to achieve and it ensures that you just know what the fuck you're talking about, right? So, you know, uh, just, I mean, at the end of the day, working with Kendrick just made me a better engineer, a better person, and everything beyond that, because he has you questioning everything you're doing for a good reason, right? Okay. If right. that answered your question. Yeah, I, I, I got another question as These well. These guys are trying to kill us over here, damn. <laughs> yeah, I, I got another question as well. But we got speakers too, man. Uh, yeah, I, 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 that's crap I'm going to. I'm going to have the guys go over there and blow them out. All right, um, and for you... Uh, what were some hardships you and Kendrick faced, uh, you as an engineer and Kendrick as a rapper? Um, I don't really want to speak about his um, situations. Obviously, he's a personal, he's a, he's a, you know, Dan, these guys, bro. Dan, can we go and see what's up? Um, I, you know, obviously, but myself, you know, one of the hardest things that I had to overcome was, and, you know, I talked about it yesterday in 2017, um, you know, I reached, uh, I hit a brick wall, right? You know, I was depressed. You know, I was doing things I shouldn't have been doing. Um, and, you know, it was because I was running myself too thin. You know, I couldn't say no. I reached a height in my career where everybody's looking for mixed by Ali. And I'm coming from the hood. I'm, I'm not about to turn nothing down. What? I need, I need all of mine. You know what I'm saying? So during this one time, I'm mixing Vince Staples' uh, Prima Donna, Mac Miller, Divine Feminine, YG, uh, Schoolboy Q, um, and another one, uh, an Oxymoron. I think that was Schoolboy. It was five albums at one time. Um, but I, I, I wasn't myself, right? I was losing relationships because I wasn't giving every project the attention that it needed, right? Um, I was, I killed my, my personal relationship with my girl. It was completely just terrible that I had to amend. Um, but mainly it was just, I almost lost myself. And you know, that's when I talk about, you don't want to lose yourself to gain the world. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it keeps you humble. Um, thank God that, you know, I made, I dug, I dug myself out of that dark hole to get here today. But, um, that was probably the hardest time of my whole life, it was 2017. Anybody got another question? We got to cut. Damn, and let's get one more question, let's get one more question. Uh, my man in the back right here. Jesus, yeah, that was rough. <laughs> uh, you mentioned a story about mixing a song and then someone wants to add a verse. Is there any funny stories about uh, mixing a song and then someone wants to re-record a verse you already spent hella time mixing? I'll tell them to go to hell. <laughs> nah, obviously, like I said, you're a tool. You got to do it, right? I mean, therefore, the artist, if not, somebody else will. It's not fun, you know, and you do it with a frown on your face and you, you might be calling somebody a bitch ass something for so long, but you get it done. You know, at the end of the day, you know, I keep mentioning we're here for the artist. We're not who we are if it wasn't for these songs. You know, no matter how we feel about their processes, you know, just ha as long as you keep respect for the art, you, know, you can get past the bullshit. Where 
Um, unfortunately, I have to cut it short because with this, they're closing this place at six, and we have to get by two more panels. Um, yeah, we're we're running behind like hell. Um, real quick, I want to thank you guys, Erico, for of course, of course. Again, for, thank you for, for having supporting. me. Thank you guys uh, for being here. Thank you, Dro, Ethan Stevens. Follow Erico on Instagram. Follow Dro. Uh, where is Dro? Right or who is Dro? I, I kind of fucked up. Where is Dro on Instagram? Ethan Stevens He's on right Instagrams. Erico, yeah, I found him. Yeah. Um, and shout out to the guys, man. Ask some questions if you guys see him running around uh, and fuck with your boy.